male or female, um, more weighted. And so these are one of the things, like it becomes very clear when it comes down to when you're seeing 50% that it's a male and female ratio even. Patients enrolled by race. This is actually really great to see. We really do want to reach everybody who has CHAMP1 and make sure that we're not just representing usually the people who are represented in research, which is usually white. And so we like to see that there's a little bit of a, a, um, a representative population here. Again, with ethnicity, we're seeing a, a nice representation here. Um, the other cool part about RARX that I want to talk to you about too is for ethnicity and race is that we don't just stop here. We don't just ask it, what, um, Hispanic or non-Hispanic and we don't just ask the, the six. We do go into your background and your history. There's a, it's called the race and ethnicity concepts um, questionnaire that we can ask a little bit more about like your actual background to see if there's, there's relationships with your, um, your hereditary um, ethnicity. Um, we ask a little bit about insurance types because oftentimes in the rare disease space we want to know what the coverage looks like, how it changes over time. And then I'm gonna go into research and genetic share and data sharing. So the big thing about RareX is we don't wanna share your data. We want you to share your data. It's not my data to share, it's yours. You're giving your time, talent, and treasure. So what we do is we, as part of the consent process, we ask you where you wanna share it. And so the first one is do you wanna share your contact information with patient advocacy groups that support your diagnosis? And then may they contact me with information about my, my, date, my disorder or things that can support me. And so these are great things to know the metrics of your population. Are they engaged? Are they wanting to be connected? That sort of thing. So it really helps us at RareX to say, okay, we're going to send that list to Jeff. He, these people want to be connected. They want to be supported. And the second one you're seeing is, I want to know when there's research being done in my, my um, disorder that I can be a part of. So when there's a clinical trial or when there's a new study going on at the, Mount Sinai that I can email you and say, hey, there's this cool new study going on with Dr. Buxbaum. We're going to, you know, here's how you get involved. The other thing is that oftentimes like you see lots of spaces about medical records. We hear a lot about the promise of medical records in this. Are you interested in having those being connected? Because we do have that coming on to um, on very shortly. And then other things that like when there's a lot of um, research that's happening in the space, are you participating in those other research projects and do you want those to be connected to data in RareX? Because the best thing is you list where you're, where you're participating and we can say, hey, we've got all this data in RareX for this person. They want it to be connected. Here you go. Because you've said you want that to happen and we can make it happen. Biological samples are really interesting in a lot of these populations. We want to know if you're interested in giving them, meaning how research ready are you guys, and then have you given them? So where are they located and where are places, again, that we can send that phenotypic data with those bio samples? So we also ask what was the reason for genetic testing. And in CHAMP1, it's pretty clear. There's usually a confirmatory diagnosis based upon some sort of symptom or the participant had symptoms of a genetic condition. It's really one of those pretty clear things in CHAMP1. So this is the really cool part. So this is getting into the data where this is the head to toe survey. This is, this, this is 10 respondents. Again, we want more in here. But right now, this is 10 respondents basically saying head to toe meaning what's going on with your kid. Are there brain and nervous system issues? Are there eyes, eye issues? Are there teeth and mouth issues, muscle issues, head, face, and neck, behavioral and psychiatric issues, growth issues? And you can kind of see this. And I'll send this around, and I actually can send you everybody a copy of this. But again, this data is being updated kind of constantly. This was pulled from, I think, a couple weeks ago. Um, but this is kind of being updated constantly. But CHAMP is very rare but it's not actually unique. That's the good part. There are lots of other symptoms that have syndromes that have similar symptoms, and I've spent most of my career working on those similar conditions. One of the magical things about this data collection, it offers researchers the, researchers the ability to look across different diseases that are similar, and imagine, imagining a researcher or a drug company focused on the impact of low muscle tone only or ear infections, or reflux, or constipation. If they were to query the data collection that we're doing, they'd find patients from 40 diseases that we're collecting data from, including yours, and they may, not, they may be able to recruit it. They may be saying, yeah, we're gonna recruit all 40 of those disorders because they have the symptomology we're looking for. So it's one of those amazing things that we're really finding in this space where we, we're collecting information and researchers are more interested on that symptomology versus necessarily saying, like, I'm looking for CHAMP1. But Lord knows I am trying to get CHAMP1 out there. If something, if somebody's re um, reached out to me and saying, I'm interested in eye issues. I was like, I have a great organization for you. And that is CHAMP1, and they have a lot of eye issues. What kind of eye issues are you interested in? And I can give them that data because at the end of the day, sharing your story and sharing your data story is also my job. The other things that we have found in this, so I do have a list of other diagnoses that have come along with, um, with CHAMP1, which are ASD, um, which is pretty common, intellectual and developmental delay, bilateral extropia, poor vision, hypotonia, mod uh, moderated bilateral hearing loss, and undescended testicles. So these, these, these are the kind of things where we're collecting different things that might be in the space that we can get out there and get your story heard. 
All right, so access to research data. This is one of the things that RareX is really proud of to do, meaning that when you say you want your data shared, we share it. We don't pass go, we don't collect $200. If a researcher logs on to our portal and says, I would like Champ1 data, we give it to them based upon what your data sharing preferences are. So when you go in and you say, I want my data shared with the general information, general public, I want it shared with people who are doing health and biomedical engineering or whatever it is, that's how we share it. Um, and so this is a QR code that if you, if you actually scan this one, this is not to enroll in RX, this is actually to access the data. So this brings you to our data sharing platform where you can see it, you can access it, you can um, request it, but it's one of those things that we really wanna make sure that it gets out there for you guys. And so this is a little, just a tutorial, a little snapshot of where you can get access to the analysis platform. And again, this is available to all researchers, clinicians, anybody who's interested who would like to request it. And I got, I talked really fast, so that's all that I have. <laughs> Does anybody have any questions? Can you go back to the data access? Yeah, sure. Yeah. So what we do is when you enroll in RareX, what we ask people to do is upload the genetic report for curation, if they can. Um, and then we also do have, we request, if there's a community that we're working with, we can collect biosamples. We know that CHAMP1 is very covered on biosamples, so we don't do that. But it's one of those things that we will reach out to. If we know that there's biosamples, we can say we have this phenotypic data and we'll send it to you and say. And the other thing is that you are in RareX, they are uh, consenting to be identified. So like if you want to, if you have five patients and you want to know who those five patients are and we send you the phenotypic data, through the consent process, we don't make it hard to know who those people are. So we have, um, we have demographic information, then we have level two, and then quality of life surveys, as well as a bunch of other ones that are out there, yeah. Yep. So. So when you go into Terra, um, you can, when you go into Terra, what ends up happening is you're gonna do a data, people do a data request. And what usually what happens is, so we have Dr. Samako from Baylor has already requested the CHAMP1 data out of Terra. And what we do is we go back to them and say, do you really only want CHAMP1 or do you want something that looks like it? So you're able to request all of them or I can do a full filter and only send you CHAMP1 um, patients. But at the end of the day, we actually want you to actually take as many as possible to do those overlapping syndromes. So um, all of our cohorts are based upon only data sharing preferences and past that we filter in Terra as needed um, per the request, but usually we'll, we're trying to give more data than less. Mm -hmm. Anybody else have any more questions? Okay, thank you so much, Vanessa.